All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Bear's Guide 205. Today we're asking the question, how does the world connect? And yeah, that's what we're going to dive into. How is the world connected and how do we, how do ideas spread and how are we connected um, so we receive ideas from other people throughout the world? And I, and I know that sounds confusing, but I promise it'll make sense by the end. So first off, what you have to know is Tobler's Law, or AKA distance decay. Now, I think this is just the silliest theory in the world. As the distance between two things increases, the level of interaction decreases. Oh my goodness, I am just shocked. I am stunned like this little puppet monkey that the further I am away from something, I am less likely to interact with it. Profound, we're done, class over, five on AP exam. Now, we know that's not good. Okay, that's a really easy thing. But when we talk about spatial interaction, and that's a fun word, spatial interaction, that's interaction in a space, we know that that Tobler's Law thing, yeah, it's real, but we know we are more connected than ever before. We have communication and transportation networks linking all of us together, and we experience this thing called space-time compression, right? This idea that there's a reduction in the time it takes for something to reach another place. Because Tobler's Law, or distance decay, was a thing before, like, I don't know, all the communication technology we have. You know, when my friend moved to Japan, well, probably a good chance I will never see that person again or talk to them. But luckily, because we have social media and communication technology, I can message that person anytime I want. Right? So we have really obliterated that idea of Tobler's Law or distance decay, or at least made it um, not so critical because we have all these new technologies. So now let's talk about diffusion, the spread of an idea. Right? We are so connected, and we briefly touched upon globalization in the last lesson, and we could use that in this too. But this idea, because we are so connected, our ideas move through the, the entire Earth a lot faster than they did say 50 years ago, or even 30, 20 years ago. So when we talk about diffusion of an idea, it is the spread of an idea from its hearth, its origin. Now there are two types of diffusion you have to know about. Now I know there's a lot of colors on the screen and I'm going to explain all of them. So the two main types of diffusion are relocation diffusion and expansion diffusion. Relocation diffusion is the spread of an idea through migration. Literally, if you were to answer a question about this, you have to write people literally take the idea with them and bring it to new people with them moving. That's it, that's relocation diffusion. People move with their idea, people move with their culture. Where is expansion diffusion? These are the types of diffusion where ideas spread on their own. They don't require human beings moving with the idea because they just take off. And there are three subcategories, three types of expansion diffusion. And we're gonna go into detail on each one of those. But I just wanted to cover the idea that you have your two main types. You have relocation diffusion, which requires the person moving, and expansion diffusion, which doesn't necessarily. So let's go into the three. So we have contagious, hierarchical, and stimulus. Contagious diffusion, our red type of diffusion, is exactly what it sounds like. It spreads from the central point to everywhere around them. And I know this is a terrible time to use this example, but it literally is the example of the year. Um, if one person gets sick, everybody has the potential to get sick. That's how contagious diffusion works. It doesn't care about uh, levels of socioeconomic status. It doesn't care about how much money you make. It just spreads, right? Another good example is like pop songs, right? Your top 40 soundtrack. Once those songs are dropped, everybody's listening to them. Doesn't matter who it is. Next up, we have hierarchical diffusion. This is the one in blue. This spreads through levels of powers and importance. So this is different than contagious. And you're going to see visuals for all these things. So if you're confused, it's OK. But it's going to skip certain people. And some people just aren't going to get on the idea. Or it's going to take them time before they get on to the idea. So hierarchical goes through power. Say a new fashion trend, right? Someone on TikTok uh, does a new thing with clothing. It's just them. They're however many followers see it and then they share it with the next group of people and eventually everybody's doing it, whatever. Or say a new iPhone comes out as the example here. Well, someone had uh, the small team develop that iPhone, then the next group of people tested it and then eventually they sold it and the people that got that idea are the ones who first bought that new iPhone and then years later, more people, the visuals will clear it up. 
Finally, the last one is stimulus, and this is probably the one students get most confused on. It's the idea of an underlying characteristic or idea spreads, but not specific characteristics or not that, that thing, that specific thing. And I use the idea of a smartphone. I have a really great visual I worked on for this year. It's going to work out. You'll see it in the upcoming slides. So this is a visual representation of contagious diffusion. Remember, you have that center point and then it just spreads from there, whether it be a really catchy song or it be some type of sickness. Doesn't matter, everybody can potentially uh, have this idea diffused to them. Hierarchical is a little different. Up here you have the source of the idea, that one person making it, and here you have the first wave, the initial diffusion. Right? These are the people that buy on right away. Um, these are the people who are interested. And then you have the people that take a while before they um, receive the diffusion of this idea or thing, and they're called laggers. So it could be like, uh, you know, source of idea is TikTok. Uh, first wave initial diffusion is all you Gen Z kids using TikTok. And then laggers is when old people like me come on TikTok and try to be funny, and we're not. All right, so. Now you have contagious and hierarchical right next to each other. Remember, contagious, notice how the colors are lit up. Everybody can be affected by the center node, but hierarchical diffusion skips people, right? There are some people that just aren't going to be into it. And understanding these two types of diffusion and what makes them unique is absolutely critical. So be like 2 chains and get it. All right, so now we're looking at our stimulus diffusion. And I know I just said I promised a really good, you know, graphic and you're looking at this thinking this this is not a good graphic but let me take you back in time a time simpler early nokia cell phones yes that is the cell phone i had as a child well not a child when i was like 12 or 13 i don't know it was one of the first cell phones you know what i mean and it was really cool i could text i could call it didn't have a touch screen it didn't have apps it had tetris but what it did have that no other phone had now i didn't get to use it is that it could connect to the internet. And I know internet's missing from the graphic, but just play along, okay? Now, I never used the internet, and it's not like the internet today where it felt like going on a computer. In fact, I never even connected to the internet because we used to get charged for everything we did on cell phones, from every text, from every minute we called, and internet charges were the most. So if you ever hit that button as a child, you immediately hit end as much as you could because you didn't want your parents to end your life. But we realized that, wow, we really like these handheld devices being able to connect to the internet. I don't like the whole Nokia thing. I think that's a really ugly phone. I think it could be done better, but I like the idea that it could connect to the internet. And this is an example of stimulus diffusion because we find this idea that phones can connect to the internet and then we start making the first iPhone, the first Blackberry, and the first Android. And we see these phones get created obviously the, the invention of smartphones being able to browse the internet go on email so on and so forth and over years we have just taken this idea and now today i mean we have these awesome phones that can do everything and it all originates from those early nokia cell phones just trying out different things and seeing the stimulus diffusion of one characteristic that one thing that all these companies launched on are latched onto and then used it to make their own unique product that is stimulus diffusion so real quick, I wanted to throw up all different types of diffusion in front of you. Up top, you got relocation diffusion, literally the physical movement, taking the culture with them. Expansion spreads the ideas through population. The person doesn't need to keep moving because the idea will spread through the population itself. Contagious will spread through contact. The best uh, example is a disease, unfortunately, I know, so horribly timed. And then stimulus, the underlying idea. So if you ever get confused, go back through this slideshow, look at these different graphics to make sure that you got it. So what do you need to know today? First off, remember, we talked about distance decay or Tobler's Law. Very, very easy. And, we, and you also have to know why we don't follow Tobler's Law anymore. Know your two main types of diffusion, your relocation and expansion, and then understand the three types of expansion diffusion, contagious, hierarchical, and stimulus, and how do they spread. It would really help in your notes if you probably drew the visual depictions of each type of diffusion. That's just me. If you have any questions, Leave them in the comments. As always, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. This was another episode of Bears Guide 205, and I'll see you next time.